On the day after the deadliest attack on the Jewish community in U.S. history, somber officials formally charged the man who murdered 11 people and injured six others at the Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh. 46-year-old Robert Bowers faces 29 federal and dozens of state charges for homicide and aggravated assault, including murdering victims for exercising their religious beliefs, a hate crime. He could face the death penalty. The fact that this attack took place during a worship service makes it even more heinous. A place of worship is a sacred place. We will be here to help you through this horrific episode. We'll get through this darkest day of Pittsburgh's history by working together. At the Tree of Life Synagogue, community members continue to stop at a growing memorial throughout the day. The 11 people who died in the mass shooting ranged in age from 54 to 97. Joyce Feinberg was 75. She retired after a long career as a researcher at the University of Pittsburgh. Richard Gottfried, 65, had just celebrated his 38th wedding anniversary. 97-year-old Rose Mallinger was a devoted member of the congregation. Jerry Rabinowitz, 66, was a family physician. Cecil Rosenthal, 59, and David Rosenthal, 54, were brothers who attended services every Saturday. Bernice Simon, 84, and Sylvan Simon, 86, were husband and wife. 71-year-old Daniel Stein was a former president of the New Light Congregation. Melvin Wax, 88, was a retired accountant. And 69-year-old Irving Younger taught classes on current events at the local community center and had two grandchildren. News Hour Weekend's Yvette Feliciano traveled to Pittsburgh last night and has been with some members of the community. 17-year-old Emily Pressman helped organize yesterday's vigil led by local high school students. I don't think I've accepted the fact that this happened to us. Emily and her mother Stacy were glued to the television this morning when the names of the 11 people killed at the Tree of Life Synagogue were released. Emily and her siblings went to Hebrew school there, and the family often goes to the temple for social gatherings like weddings and bar and bat mitzvahs. I mean, I could have been there. I know so many people who are part of that congregation that could have been there. And the people who were there just, I mean, they're in, they're in my heart, they're in everyone's hearts right now. The Tree of Life Synagogue is one of several in this tight-knit community that is home to a third of Pittsburgh's Jewish population. It housed three congregations and was a center of activity. Like most people we talked to here, Emily and her mom were confident they'd know some of the victims, and they were right. I know two of them. I know that they were always greeted me. They were very kind souls. They brought smiles to my faces. They were very close to my fam to my one of my best friends. It's just starting to sink in this morning. You know, I woke up this morning tired, with a pit in my stomach for a for a second, not really knowing why, and then I remembered what happened. These are the people who were in synagogue on a Saturday morning. These were the diehards who were there because they, you know, wanted to celebrate their faith. Um, they were wonderful older members of our community. Emily Pressman said she and others in the community felt helpless watching the news yesterday and needed to take action. People were murdered for their faith. It's not just saying something anymore. It's not just pointing a picture and saying, go die, Jew. It's them honestly shooting a gun in people's faces and killing them. I think people are upset. I think people are angry, and I think there's a fine line between angry and hate, and right now we just have to make sure that people don't cross that line. My family were members of uh, Orla Simcha before it merged with uh, Tree of Life Congregation. It's just a really a warm, welcoming environment and place, and so I'm absolutely heartbroken. Adam Hertzman is the Director of Marketing for the Jewish Federation of Greater Pittsburgh. He says the organization has seen a rise in anti-Semitic vandalism over the last few months. There were uh, pamphlets put on cars in the Squirrel Hill area with uh, anti-Semitic rhetoric on them. And there's, I think, sadly in the society, always an undercurrent of racism and anti-Semitism. Emily Pressman says if this could happen in Squirrel Hill, it could happen anywhere. Is there a time where anti-Semitism has occurred in Pittsburgh and Squirrel Hill? Yes. 
Do I think that happens everywhere? Yes. Do I think that's why this happened? No. We're just an unlucky place when there were unlucky people in a building. And that's all that happened. CBS News Hour Weekend's Yvette Feliciano joins me now from near the synagogue in Pittsburgh. Uh, Yvette, yesterday the president made some comments about how the presence of an armed guard uh, at the synagogue could have helped to prevent this massacre or to save lives. What are the people in that neighborhood that you've spoken to? How do they feel about this? Um, Hari, those comments have gotten a mixed reaction from people we've spoken to here on the ground. Emily uh, Pressman and her mom, Stacy, who we had been speaking with, say they're very opposed to that idea. Emily already attends a high school here in the community where she has to walk through a metal detector every day. And she says that makes her feel like it's a militarized place and she wouldn't want that at her local synagogue where she says it's always felt like a safe space for her and a welcoming space. And she feels the presence of an armed guard would change that dynamic. And generally, uh, she expressed some frustration at the notion that the community um, that was targeted could have done something more to prevent this tragic event. Yvette, in your report, we heard that there had been an uptick in anti-Semitic vandalism in the area. How is the community reacting to that? That is something that we heard from the representative of the Jewish Federation of Greater Pittsburgh, who said, you know, they have seen an uptick. He didn't want me to overstate the number of incidents because this has generally been a safe area, but they have seen that uptick. And what they've been doing is working with the local synagogues and Jewish schools and Jewish agencies to do uh, active shooter trainings in the area. And that's something that he believes will continue in the coming weeks. All right. What's next for this community? this week? What, what, are, what are the things that are coming up in the next few days? What we heard from people that we were speaking with today is that we need to give the families of the victims time to mourn. Uh, we can expect to see a few more vigils this week. And in addition to the grieving and religious communities coming together to mourn, we've also seen a heightened police presence uh, outside of religious institutions and public buildings. So we can expect to see a lot of that in the coming week. Yvette Feliciano joining us from Pittsburgh tonight. Thanks so much. Thank you.